Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you guys the fragrances that I have from the Mason Francis Kirk John, um, why I picked the ones I did and the ones I'm going to be purchasing in the future. Mostly because I talk a lot about Mason Francis Kirk John and I think he's one of the houses where I have most fragrances. Um, there's other houses that are about equal and I wanted to start bringing you guys house reviews and why I have certain houses and why I collect certain houses. I know I've been doing some full house reviews like Imaginary Authors and Elizabeth and James um, but and Panna London and those are all fantastic fragrances that I definitely stand behind and recommend. But there's other fragrances that I get really excited for new releases, really excited to see um, what's coming up and also really trying to collect some of the classics from that line. And I figured I'd start out doing these videos with the one that really kind of started it all when it came down to me really getting behind a nose and getting behind a house, which is Francis Kirk John. So if you'd like to know what fragrances from Ways and Francis Kirk John I have and why, then keep watching. <laughs> A little bit of background on me, I kind of always say this, but again, if this is your first video, I worked in the perfume store forever and I wore fragrances pretty much since I was like eight. Um, the fragrance that I grew up wearing before I started getting into more higher end designer fr fragrances when I worked at the fragrance counter. So this is the fragrances I wore in elementary school, middle school, and the beginning of high school was Elizabeth Arden Green Tea. And I loved that fragrance. And I still do. I have Elizabeth Arden Green Tea, Elizabeth Arden Green Tea Jasmine. Um, was No, Cherry Blossom. I need to get the Jasmine Tea. Um, Yuzu, which is my one of my favorite bedtime fragrances, and Iced Tea. I love it. Or Spiced. No, it's Spiced, not Iced Tea. I love that line of fragrances. It's really a fantastic fragrance line. So when I started collecting um, um, fragrances, I started to get a little bit knowledgeable on noses and the history behind the fragrances and the fragrance houses. So fast forward when I'm getting married, and I spent months trying to figure out what fragrance I wanted to wear on my wedding day and I went to Neiman Marcus and I was at the counter for probably like an hour and a half like I normally am just talking and chatting and the sales lady I forget her name because it's been years she was so nice she showed me um Mason Francis Kirk John. move back a little bit Mason Francis Kirk John and she was just talking to me about him and I got really enraptured from the fragrances that I tried um, and then she's like, well, did you know that he was the nose behind a lot of really popular fragrances? And I was like, no, what, what fragrances? And he was the nose behind green tea. He's the nose behind one of my favorite uh, masculine fragrances, Lamal, from um, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Like, and a lot of the other fragrances that I loved, he was the nose behind. And I got really excited because I loved the profile of those fragrances, especially on me. They worked very well. So that's initially what started my venture into really appreciating um, Francis Kirk John. Now, some people really like his nose and they think that he's a master. Other people think that he's overhyped. You can think what you want to think. I really appreciate his fragrances. So I only have a few fragrances from him and I'm going to get into them. I have some samples, some of the bigger travel samples, and I have five bottles currently. Um, and I'm going to talk about, I know I've reviewed most of them, so I'll link the review below if I have the reviews of these guys. But I really wanted to kind of get into what made me buy them. But I also wanted to share with you guys fragrances from him that I'm going to be purchasing because there are definitely three or four on my must purchase list coming up very soon. This one gets a lot of praise on my channel and a lot of other people's channel. I think that this is probably the one that he's most known about in both formulations, the Aqua Universalis and the Aqua Universalis Forte. I prefer the Forte on my skin. It just is a little bit more bright and really like more intense citrus and I really really love that. This was my wedding day scent. I absolutely love this scent a lot. This is just to me, it's cool, it's crisp, it's bright, it's not sweet but there's just this, I love this. I, re I really, I can't get enough of this fragrance. I can drown myself in this fragrance. So this is the one that kind of started me into experiencing really appreciating Mason Francis Kirk John as Francis Kirk John and not so much the nose behind a variety of different fragrances because I love seeing when perfumers go and start their own line rather than working behind major houses like Roja Dove and Maja Bacali and uh, Francis Kirk John and other noses like that. I get really excited because it's like to that for me it's like what they've always wanted to create. 
And so this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, amazing fragrance, and I love it so much. And this is kind of what started this journey of Francis Kirkjohn. The very same day that I bought Universalis Forte, or I sampled Universalis Forte, I was also kind of shopping for a, um, a soon-to-be autumn winter scent. This was around the time where I would purchase a lot of fragrances, but I would shop for signature scents. And if you guys haven't gotten by now, this is going to be less reviewing these fragrances and more kind of story time-esque videos. I think you guys like my fragrance story time videos, and I think getting into houses and the reasons why would be a great way to talk to you guys about my fragrance journey while also talking about fragrances. So yeah. Um, so the thing is, is like I used to go around and really I wanted, I would shop for a signature fragrance, and that would be what I would wear most of the time during that spring. So I, like around spring, the end of spring, I would start shopping for my fall fragrance. Around the end of fall, it would be my winter fragrance and things like that. So when I had purchased my Aqua Universalis Forte, I got married. I had like two weddings. I had like a ceremony with just family where we just exchanged vows. And then we had a reception a few months later so that friends could be there. And it was more of like a party, which is the wedding I talk about where I painted all the glasses. And that's when I wore my wedding scent. But I did want to wear something really nice on my wedding day, too, so I wore that both days. Um, but I had been shopping around for that in August, and that's around the time I kind of get my fall scents because September, October, November. Anyway, um, so I was there and I got that, and I was kind of like, oh, I'm looking for a fall scent. And a woman next to me had saw that I purchased Forte, and she's like, well, have you tried any of the, um, the, Oud, the Oud Mood ones, or the Oud fragrances from him? I'm like, no. She's like, I love cashmere. And like the, the sales guy had just grabbed a box for her. Like she was there purchasing cashmere. She's like, smell this. It will change your life. And I did. And I was blown away by this fragrance. Now, the thing with this fragrance, guys, is that it is very, very potent and strong. If you do not like smoke, like burnt matches, <laughs> burning wood, this is not the one from Mason Francis Kirkjohn for you. Satin mood, silk mood, velvet mood, those are all way, way more people tend to love those more. And this one tends to be kind of like, oh, oh, that smells like a campfire. But growing up in Girl Scouts, I was always the girl in front of the campfire. I was always the girl who was covered in ash. I had to take a bath every night because I was covered in ash. I was like throwing leaves and sticks into the fire. We used to give, they used to give at the end of every camp trip, like little novelty merit badges, which were kind of fun. And I got like a matchbook. <laughs> like I love the smell of burning wood. I really enjoy it. And so this to me is perfect because the oud in here is gorgeous, but it's got that smoky burnt wood and it's just a little touch of vanilla in here that kind of sweetens it up. And I loved it. And I absolutely loved it. And she's like, try the other ones. But like, once you smell the other ones and you smell this, you'll see why this is so different. And that's what I really loved about this fragrance. And this fragrance kept in my mind for a year. It took me over a year to purchase this fragrance because it was around the time where I was starting to make a little bit more money. So I wasn't at the place where I could spend my money as freely. Um, so I was being very mindful and this was so expensive and this was going to be it wasn't signature scent worthy. It was like an emotional, really excited purchase that I knew I would love, but I didn't know if people around me would love. So it took me a year to finally get to, I'm going to purchase this. And I did. And I'm so glad I did. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And I really, I want to collect every single Oud fragrance from him because I love what he does with Oud. I really do. Oud is such a beautiful fragrance. I'm so glad that it's trending now. I'm so glad that it's popular because I love it in pretty much just about anything. And I love seeing so many people do so many different things with Oud. But this is probably my favorite just Oud fragrance in general because I get that beautiful burnt wood, like match, burning match, like Oud and vanilla. It's just delicious. And I love, love, love this one. Next up, I think this is the second one I got. I don't quite remember. It's been a few years. The little thing has been wearing away. But this is probably one of the most romantic scents that he has ever created and that I have in my collection just in general. And I really love romantic fragrances. They're very whimsical. They're very feminine. They're youthful but not juvenile. And I really think feminine plural 
is most definitely there. But it's just a bouquet of beautiful flowers. And I got this just because I wanted to get a few nice feminine fragrances. And I went to the counter and I usually, a lot of you guys have asked where I get my fragrances from. I'm going to do an entire video on that where I purchase my fragrances because it's from a variety of different places. <clears throat> but generally when it comes down to really expensive fragrances, I tend to prefer to spend more money and get them from an actual fragrance counter in like a department store. Um, and the reason why is, it's not that I don't trust other websites, and there's a few websites I trust more than most, and I'll get into that when I do the video. It has more to do with how the fragrances are kept. <laughs> like, are they kept in a warehouse? Is the warehouse air conditioned? Um, how old are they? It, to me, it's more about the lifespan of the fragrance rather than the authenticity. So if I'm going to be spending $100, $200, $300, $400 on a bottle of perfume, I want to make sure that I'm getting like the freshest juice because, you know, this is since I have a lot of fragrances and I do store them very nicely, I still want to make sure that they don't turn bad or they weren't in an environment that would make the uh, juice go rancid. So that's why I generally will purchase, spend a little bit more money and go to the actual fragrance counter. But I'm not against testers. I'm not against discount sites. I'm not against wholesale sites or things like that. There are some I trust more than most. Again, I'll get into that when I do that video. But generally, all of these were purchased from the Neiman Marcus, Neiman Marcus counter at my local Neiman Marcus. And yeah. So this is Feminine Plurial. And again, it's just... A romantic really beautiful a floral scent and I was just looking for something light and springy and just something I could just spritz on and walk around my house and not feel too dressed up but still really feel very pretty and elegant and this kind of fit the bell perfectly and I was like oh, I can add another one to my collection this is great so I really love this fragrance a lot um, I think I've described this as like a maid of honors bouquet or a flower girl flowers it's just really whimsical and romantic and pretty and light and beautiful and I really really love this this other fragrance is another one I did a review on um, and the thing with this fragrance is, is he is I think well most known for this fragrance and also the Aqua Universalis fragrances. Again, that's just basically what I've seen in forums and in passing and talking to people. Um, this is what he created for Baccarat. It's Baccarat Rouge 540. This one, you guys, a lot of people say this is purely a feminine fragrance because it is so candy sweet, but I think this is a fragrance that if a man wore it would be so sexy and just kind of like it would take you off your guard. You would be like, what are you wearing? Oh my gosh. Like it's one of those fragrances. Again, anyone can wear anything, anywhere. A age doesn't matter. Sex doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. You can wear whatever you want. But for me, this fragrance is so warm. I love the marigold in this. It's so sweet. It's like burnt sugar, which is a hint of floral in there. And this is like a fragrance that like, I immediately remember purchasing this. Like, this is one of the fragrances, kind of like cashmere, oud cashmere mood, that I kind of put off for a little bit. Because I had just bought a bottle of Prada Candy, and I like Prada Candy, but it's one of those, like, basic fragrances. And I don't mind basic fragrances, and I go into it over and over and over again. There's a beauty about basic fragrances. But Prada Candy to me and like a uh, pink sugar are fragrances that I wear around the house when I'm kind of feeling really playful and I'm playing video games and I just want to smell sweet. Um, I didn't want to spend this much money on a perfume that I was just going to wear when I play video games. Although sometimes I do wear my Enslaved from Roja, which is very expensive. We'll get into that later. Anyway, so this guy took me a little bit to finally be like, you know what, I really need this. I would go in, I would spritz it, I'd walk around, they'd be like, are you going to buy it? I'd be like, no, I'm going to pick up this bottle today. And so finally, like, I came in and I looked at him and I'm like, I want to buy it. And he knew exactly which one I was talking about. And so he grabs it, he's like, finally. And I was like, I know, because it had been this, like, teasing, like, flirting love affair for, like, a year and a half to, like, wear this fragrance. So... Uh, so was it that long? I don't know. It had been a while. It had been long enough for it to be like a running joke with between me and my essay at the fragrance counter. And so I purchased it and I was so happy to finally do it. And normally whenever I check out at any fragrance counter, I am like one of those no fuss people. You don't need to pretty up the bag. You can just dump it in a bag and I'm good. And he's like, no, 
you're gonna get the treatment. I'm like, what? He's like, you've waited this long. So he like wrapped it up in tissue paper and wrapped it up with a red bow and put it in the bag. And then he put tissue paper in a bag and then he spritzed the tissue paper with the perfume and then he put it in a bigger bag and he's like, here. He's like, you finally got it. And so I was like, I was like, you didn't have to do that. And he's like, no. <laughs> so like I had this bag and if you guys have ever experienced this perfume, you know how incredibly strong it is. It fills a room in such a beautiful way. It's like walking into a candy shop, you know? Like you ever walk into like one of those candy shops or ice cream shops that make their own fudge and you just smell the candy? That's how, and it just fills everywhere. That's kind of like what this fragrance does. And so like I had put the bag on, um, I have a little area where I put my shopping bags until I'm ready to put them away because I have to make sure I have a space for it, clean everything up. And so it, it's in this room and this entire room smelled like this for like three or four days. And I just remembered the excitement of finally buying it, having my essay like doll it up and kind of sex it up a little bit when he packaged it for me. And it was such a fun and wonderful experience. And the fact that I had waited so long to get this kind of added to it too, which is why I don't like to just buy fragrances. Sometimes I do if I fall in love with them, but sometimes I kind of love the anticipation and the chase. And this is one of the fragrances that I chased. And then when I finally caught it, it was just this wonderful experience and it just makes me so happy. And it was a lot of fun. And this is just a beautiful fragrance and I'm so happy to have it. And it's just gorgeous. The last full-size bottle I have from Francis Kirk John, at least currently, um, is A La Rose. Now this is a beautiful rose fragrance. This is something that's a very fresh, wet garden rose, which is something that I really admire. And this is one of the fragrances that my husband can stand. My husband actually, like we were talking about this yesterday, he's like, you know, I really don't dislike fragrances. I just hate most of yours. <laughs> was like oh thank you he's like no no he's like you like those really intense ones I like one note maybe two notes so he really likes Demeter fragrances because they just kind of smell like one thing and I'm like you know most of those are a mix of different things to smell that way right and he's like uh <laughs> but he if he if there's a fragrance that he likes he likes like garden rose fragrances he loves roses hates orchids there's a reason for that. Maybe I'll get into it later. Loves roses and I love rose fragrances too. So he likes fresh garden rose fragrances. He likes roses to Chloe. Um, he loves Bulgari Rose Essential and he really likes this one too. So I was like when I was purchasing this I was looking for another fresh rose fragrance because I just can't get enough of them. And I was just sampled this and I had seen it and I tried it and I liked it in passing but I've tried a bunch of different ones and I went to the counter and I kind of wanted to get another fragrance from him which sometimes I'm like I need to add another one to my collection and I smelled it and I was like you know what I think my husband would like this. I'll get this because I think my husband will like this. And so he was like, wait, because if you open it, you can't like uh, return it. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to return it. He's like, no, no, no. So I purchased it and he gave me this little guy which is the all of the little travel mist. He's like, see, if he's like, if he doesn't like it, you can exchange it for something else. You know, and I was like, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, just take this. I think it was the last one and they were just trying to get rid of it. Uh, Cause they had like a beauty event or something. And this was the last one laying around. So they were just like, just take it. Nobody wants it. And I was like, why? I'm like, okay, okay. Um, so I put this on when I got home and my husband loved it. He really liked it. He thought it was a really beautiful fragrance. He really liked it. It smelled like rose. It doesn't smell foofy, I think is what he said. <laughs> and so I have this. And this one sometimes will go in my bag when I wear this. So yeah, so this is my Ella Rose. And I bought it to, you know, look for a fresh rose fragrance that my husband would like. And he does. And he did. And I wear it. And I love it. And I'm kind of babbling, so... I think also when I purchased All A Rose, when they gave me this, they gave me a candle of All A Rose. I just don't like candles, so it's just kind of sitting on my vanity. But I wanted to talk about the little guys I have right here, because these are kind of like my samples or travel sprays. This obviously is All A Rose, was given to me when I purchased that, um, just so that I think they could get rid of it, or in case I wanted to come back and exchange it for another one. I don't know, it was very nice of them to do it. So these guys right here, which are obviously the little travel samples, this one I've used way more. These two I've used more than others. More than this one, a little bit more. Um, and this is Grand Soiree. Soir? Soir? Grand Soir? You know, I can't pronounce things. Um, love. 
freakishly, freakishly love this one. I am just, it's so good. I can't even, it's like vanilla and incense and there's just something really rummy and boozy about this fragrance and sexy. Oh, this is just freakishly gorgeous. This is on my must buy list. I just need to get to a fragrance counter to purchase it. Because my essays work, like we work so closely together, like I like to purchase from my essays because I'm kind of loyal to them because they've put so much time and effort and patience into me that I think that they've earned my business. <laughs> so generally, um, there's two essays that I go to in Neiman Marcus, or there's three, there's the team, there's the two women at the La Mer counter that kind of work hand in hand with each other. I go to them for any beauty, and fragrance if my essay for essay isn't there. If my essay is there for fragrance, I will make my fragrance versus purse. Fragrance purchased first. There we go. It's been a long night. Um, and then I will go and make my skincare or beauty purchase from the ladies. So that way I can make sure that I'm giving my business to the people who have earned it, who have been polite and respectful and given me their time. Because sometimes, because I am tattooed, I am not very fashionable, I do have blue hair. A lot of times some people would ignore me, which is fine, you can do whatever you want. I had the people that I trust, and these people from the very beginning have been very respectful and given me time and effort and energy, and they have earned my respect and my business and my, my dollars. So I try to make sure I give them my business. So this is something I need to go to my essay and purchase. I'm not going to purchase online, but it is such a gorgeous fragrance, you guys. This is beautiful almost like a little bit of licorice in there I get. I'm gonna review this fragrance when I have the full-size bottle of it but um it's like vanilla it's boozy a little bit of licorice I don't I don't know I'm not gonna get into the notes of this fragrance because I kind of want to do that if I'm reviewing this is kind of more again like a talky story time video but this is definitely on my buy list um this other one is satin mood from um obviously Miss Francis Kirk John if I say Mason Francis Kirk John, I'm talking specifically about the house, Mason Francis Kirk John. Not so much. Well, I know that's kind of redundant with Mason. Um, not Francis Kirk John, the nose behind a lot of other fragrances. So this is the Satin Mood one, which is a little bit more floral. I think a little bit more vanilla, maybe rose. It's really beautiful. I really love this. This will probably be the next one from the Oud line I buy, but I also really love Velvet. Velvet Mood is so good. And then Straight Oud's really nice too. All sizes I get when I purchase from my counter. They'll give me like six of these. Um, but these are the newer ones that I got because I've been interested in these guys. This is the Aqua Vitae. Um, I think these are official sample vials. But a lot of times they'll spray it in like a little small one or give you a, the small ones that he used to have. But they gave me these giant ones. I don't know. Aqua Vitae is nice. I really, really like it. This is kind of like trying out for spring fragrances. And this is the, uh, and this is Lumiere Noir Femme. This is really nice. I don't know if this is bottle worthy though for me. I just, there's something about this one that's really, really gorgeous and I like, but it doesn't fit the profile of how I want to smell right now. But I've had been enjoying spritzing this. So anyway, yeah, those are my um, fragrances from Mason Francis Kirk John. I hope you guys liked this video. I kind of wanted to take you guys more into my fragrance collecting like inside my head. And I feel like the best way to do that is to share you with you guys houses or notes. And not just a list off notes like, here's my top 10 vanilla. Here's my top 10 rose. Although I really love bringing you guys those lists. Sometimes I just kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit more because I do love to talk if you haven't noticed my super long videos. Um, and I feel like the best way to do that is to kind of tell you guys more stories. And so the thing with Francis Kirk John is that he was my first real perfume that I fell in love with was from his nose. And I just really love how he puts together fragrances. It doesn't just have to be under the his house. It can it doesn't have to be the ultra luxury fragrances. It can definitely be even the more affordable fragrances that he's worked on are just magic to me. To me, to my nose and my fragrance aesthetic, they're just magic and I've really been appreciating them so much. So the ones that I really want to purchase and I kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit towards the end. These are fragrances like I have a little list of fragrances I need to buy and the list 
is like 80 bottles at this point. And I had the list where I need to buy. There's the list that I want to buy. And then there's a list that I want to sample more. And it's like, if you guys make recommendations, it goes on the list. If I have a sample, like maybe I do a first impression, it goes on the list. Like pretty much every fragrance except for things I can't stand go on the list. Um, and then I, every like month I kind of amend the list a little bit because I have like, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good and not spend that much money a month on fragrances. I'm trying to be good. I feel like I'm a toddler throwing a tantrum doing this. So like, I'm like, I'm trying to limit myself to like three to four bottles. February, I went crazy. I got like 20 bottles of perfume. So I was like, okay, I went crazy. I was spending gift cards using store credits. I'm like, this month I have to be good. So I've been good this month. I've gotten five bottles. Two of them were given to me. So technically I'm still within my three bottle limit. But it's also the month's only half over, so we'll see how I do. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is like the fragrances I'm going to talk to you about that you want to get from Mason Francis Kirk John, I'm going to be getting very soon, probably within the next month or two. A, because they're going to fit in with my spring-summer um, fragrance um, wardrobe. And there's other ones that I've been flirting with and playing around for getting forever. And I just need to just, just do it, just jump in. Um, and the first one, obviously, is Grand, Grand Soir. Soiree? Soir? This one is just luscious. This is one of those fragrances that it doesn't matter how old you are, what sex you are, if you're dressed up or dressed down, this fragrance is going to turn heads. If you're a man, it'll turn heads from everybody. For women, it'll turn heads from everyone. This is just such a beautiful, luscious, like I think luscious is the best word fragrance, but it's not feminine. Like I don't get any femininity from this whatsoever, but it's also not that, it's like unisex, but like androgynous. I think that's the word, not unisex, androgynous. This is a very androgynous fragrance. It's just really beautiful. I just can't get enough of this. Um, the other one I'm probably probably on my to-do list is the Satin Mood. I think I want to get Velvet Mood first. I do like that one. I do love the Satin Mood. Um, the other one I really, 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 really want to get is Oud. His just straight Oud is just so good. All the Oud line, all the Oud moods are really, really good. I'm also really interested in Aqua Celestia. I did a first impression of that. I'll link that video below. I love everything about that fragrance. It smells so good. I've, I've, they've given me like three other samples. I've used through two of them. I have like one sample left. The problem I have with that fragrance is the longevity on my skin. It's like one, maybe two hours. And the thing is, is I know fragrances wear away. I don't expect them to be as strong as the first hour. I don't. I'm not like going to sit here and want it to be like so strong, but I want to be able to at least myself, if I'm shoving my hand up my nose like you can see like you know like eh. <laughs> I want to be able to smell it if I'm doing that but I can't with aqua celestia no my nose is red I'm sorry um and that's the problem with aqua celestia on my skin other people who have reviewed it do not have that problem with longevity like I said with all of my reviews I'm giving you my reviews based on my experiences Everybody is different when it comes down to longevity and body chemistry. It depends on your environment. It depends on where you spray and things like that. I live in a humid, hot, sticky climates. And so when it comes down to light fragrances like that, because it is a very light, water-like fragrance, sometimes they don't last. And it's just my, my body chemistry and my environment. And for some reason, some sad unknown reason, that fragrance just doesn't last. I have drenched myself. I've taken like an entire sample bottle and just sprayed my clothes and it just still wears away in two hours. So I don't know if I'm going to purchase it because I, every time I wear it, I love it. I love that fragrance with a passion. It is beautiful and fresh and perfect. Um, but I have other fragrances, like I just purchased from the Aqua Allegoria from Guerlain, the Herba Fresca that had been on my need to buy list for a while. I'm hoping that fragrance will fill the need that I have with Aqua Celestia. We'll see. If not, I'll probably end up buying Aqua Celestia. I'll probably end up buying the big one because I'm going to be using through it so fast because I'm going to be replying it every hour. But it's a gorgeous fragrance and I really, really, really like it. Um, is there any others from him that I want to buy? 
I think currently that's it. I think the Oud moods, specifically Velvet, and specifically Oud. <laughs> Just straight Oud. Oud's great. Grand Soir and Aqua Celestia are the ones that are on my radar right now. But all of his fragrances are great and I really, really enjoy them. And I just have been in love with his nose and his house and the quality of his fragrances. And I love the bottles and everything. I just really like it. So that is me talking way too long. I think we're coming up to 25, maybe 30 minutes. I'm sorry. Of the fragrances from Francis Kirkjohn. Mason Francis Kirkjohn fragrances. I don't know if you guys will like these types of videos because I don't know if you guys like my ultra long talking videos where I'm just kind of briefly talking about fragrances and getting more story time. If you guys like my kind of fragrance story time journey videos like this, um, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments section just because I don't want to waste your time <laughs> if this isn't the type of videos that you like. But I love talking to you guys. Like I like vlogging and talking and sharing my fragrance journey with you guys, the past, the present, and the future. And this, I think, is a great way to do it is by sharing houses and what got me into those houses and got me excited for collecting the houses. The same thing with noses and notes and things like that. Like, I'm probably gonna go a huge long video into why I love vanilla fragrances. Um, and also the other house videos that I kind of really want to touch on and get more into is Serge Luton's. Um, Armani Privé, and I also kind of want to touch a little bit more on Light Blue, Dulce, and Gabbana because I talked about it in passing, but when I purchased that first fragrance, that was like a long, it was a long drawn out um, two weeks for me to figure out which one I wanted to buy. I was heavy sampling. I always have been a heavy sampler. Um, so I thought maybe since a lot of you guys have told me that that's been your gateway <laughs> fragrance, I thought it might be fun to talk about gateway fragrances and use um, light blue as an example. So if you guys like these more long talking vloggy live videos about fragrances and specifically why I purchased them, what I'm going to purchase and things like that, give this video a thumbs up and let me know below. So yeah, that's the video. Again, like I said, thumbs it up if you like videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe guys, because it's free and I'm free. And I put out new videos every Monday through Friday, and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy. Have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time. Bye!